and in loving tribute we are truly heartbroken. Eric Bowling's former Fox News co-hosts on The Five paid an emotional tribute to their friend's son, Eric Chase Bowling, who died tragically at age 19. You, of course, know Eric Bowling and his wife Adrienne and their beautiful son, Eric Chase. He passed away Friday in Colorado, where he was attending college, Kimberly Guilfoyle said. Eric Chase brought so much love and joy to his parents' lives. She continued, if you've watched our show over the years, you've probably heard Derek Bowling proudly talk about his sweet son. He was a baseball player like his dad, who played left field. He was an amazing young man. He did so much to help others, and he was an A student who excelled in mathematics. Guilfoyle said everyone at Fox News grieves with the Bowlings. We are truly heartbroken and we want to extend our deepest condolences to the Bowling family. Eric Chase, may he rest in eternal peace. The cause of death is still being investigated, and an autopsy will be performed next week. Early reports claim the teen had committed suicide after being distraught over the shocking firing of his dad. Eric Jr. was reportedly very close to Bowling, who was known for being a loved and devoted dad. In a tweet, Bowling said early signs suggest his son did not commit suicide, but an autopsy is underway. Eric Chase's body was found in his bed at his Colorado apartment but there was no suicide note, according to multiple press reports. We are overwhelmed by the love and support we have received, Bowling tweeted. Adrian and I thank you all and ask that you please keep us in your prayers. Kid Rock rips Al Sharpton, fake news media funny how scared I have them all. Musician and possible Michigan Senate candidate Kid Rock took to his website late Sunday night to tell his fans to ignore the garbage the extreme left is trying to create. Rock, whose real name is Robert James Ritchie, directly addressed a number of accusations leveled against him in the lengthy post. People. Pay no attention to the garbage the extreme left is trying to create. The musician wrote. Rock also took aim at the National Action Network, the Al Sharpton founded civil rights group that announced plans to protest Rock's series of upcoming concerts in his hometown of Detroit. So, for the unforeseen future, I will focus my philanthropy efforts on other organizations besides the ones I have supported in the past. I would, however, employ that man go ahead and make up these losses since they claim to be so good for Detroit and do not want me opening the arena and generating tons of jobs and tax dollars for the city and people I love, idiots. The musician continued to add a number of postscripts to his initial post. P.S. Sam Riddle is a piece of SHT criminal and prime example of a lot that is and has been wrong with Detroit. Sam, you suck and you know it. He wrote. The second postscript seemed to directly address NFL player Colin Kaepernick, who infamously refused to stand for the American National Anthem last year. PPS to be clear, FCK anyone who takes a knee or sits during our National Anthem. Pretty sure if Russell Wilson or Tom Brady were doing it they would have no problem finding a job playing for any team they wanted in the NFL. So cut the bullsh t. Rock then cited a specific article that he referred to as fake news. The article from the New York Post claimed that Rock had gloated over the arrest of Reverend Al Sharpton's daughter. Rock stated on his website that the Twitter account that reportedly retweeted derogatory things about Sharpton's granddaughter did not belong to Rock. Rock also seemed to imply that he may have his sights set higher than just the U.S. Senate. Like it or not. Hillary Clinton lost, and your president is Donald Mother King Trump. But if Kid Rock for Senate has got folks in disarray, wait till they hear Kid Rock for President of the USA. Tim Tebow makes World War II vet smile at Hurricane Irma shelter he's the antique pernick. Former University of Florida quarterback Tim Tebow brightened the day of a World War II veteran at a Hurricane Irma shelter for evacuees with special needs. The older gentleman played quite well, especially when you consider he has hardly any teeth. Tebow's visit touched the man's daughter so much she broke down in tears with gratitude. 
Tebow, a 2007 Heisman Trophy winner, shared the encounter with his 4 million-plus Twitter fans, where he gushed that the older gentleman had inspired him. We're praying for you. God's got a plan for everything, so keep trusting him. God bless you guys. Tim's legions of fans had nothing but praise for the star athlete. Debo, who recently wrapped his first minor league baseball season as a member of the St. Lucie Mets, is known for his extensive charity work and his generosity toward his fans. Debo punctuated his good deed by blasting a three-run home run after the encounter. Tim made his way into the stands and gave the boy a warm hug. Soldier threatens to kill Mike Pence, gets brutal karma justice in return. William Dunbar of Berlin, Pennsylvania, was posing as a hotshot who felt free enough to say anything and get away with it, but the years of serving the National Guard apparently taught him nothing, or at least that every action has an adequate reaction as a result. During the weekend, Dunbar was at the Army National Guard training center and suddenly exclaimed, if someone pays me enough money, I will kill the vice president. Strangely, he wasn't aware that a threat like that one could cost you more than a strange look or two. As the words escaped his mouth, Dunbar was overheard, of course, and his statement cost him plenty afterward. His superior learned of the occurrence, meaning Dunbar was about to learn the ugly truth about what happens to those who cannot think twice before talking nonsense. Prior to his arrest, Dunbar was subjected to a psychological evaluation at the Conma Memorial Medical Center for a psychological evaluation. Dunbar's results of the evaluation were not disclosed, and he is currently in jail on a $250,000 bond. Coming from a liberal point of view, Dunbar's words were quite normal and acceptable. Just like that. Eric and Laura Trump welcome their first child together, a baby son named Derek Luke. President Trump's son, Eric Trump, and his wife Laura welcomed a baby boy on Tuesday. The new father announced the birth of his son on Twitter with a sweet photo of the newborn. Laura Lee Trump and I are excited to announce the birth of our son, Eric Luke Trump at 8.50 this morning, Eric Trump wrote on Twitter. Trump congratulated his son on Twitter saying, Congratulations to Eric and Lara on the birth of their son, Eric Luke Trump this morning. Vice President Mike Pence also congratulated the new parents. Donald Trump Jr., who has five children himself with wife Vanessa, also wrote on Twitter, Congrats buddy. Welcome to the club. Now that the niceties are out of the way it's older brother revenge for that drum set to my kids. Trump's daughter, Ivka tweeted a message on the new parents. This is also the ninth grandchild for President Trump. Ivka Trump also has three children, Arabella, Theodore and Joseph, with husband Jared Kushner. Sanders asked if Trump will read Hillary's new book. Her response sets the room on fire. After being asked whether or not President Donald Trump would read Hillary Clinton's new book, What Happened, Sarah Huckabee Sanders responded by ripping apart Clinton's campaign and how the last chapter of her life would be focused around negativity. Blake asked, Will the president be reading Hillary Clinton's book, and what does he think about the excerpts that have gotten out so far? Sanders responded, Whether or not he's going to read Hillary Clinton's book, I'm not sure. But I would think that he's pretty well versed on what happened. And I think it's pretty clear to all of America. I think it's sad that after Hillary Clinton ran one of the most negative campaigns in history and lost and the last chapter of her public life is going to be now defined by propping up book sales with false and reckless attacks. And I think that that's a sad way for her to continue. Watch below. Whoops Amazon and Walmart struck Hillary with dreadful news on her book. Hillary Clinton felt the devastation after realizing that she would not be earning as much money as she had earlier planned. Truth be told, there were no souls in America interested enough to read Hillary's dreadful pity party. 
honestly, who would want to spend money on that read whatsoever? Hillary has lost by a landslide, and reading a failed candidate's thoughts is not exactly thought-provoking. If anyone looks to read anything remotely similar to what Hillary is trying to achieve, they can turn to It Takes a Village, Hard Choices, Living History, and or Stronger Together. Regardless, we can already almost foresee what this book is going to consist of making excuses, taking no responsibility and shifting the blame to anyone in sight. View image on Twitter I was on the way to winning until the combination of Jim Comey's letter on October 28th and Russian WikiLeaks raised doubts in the minds of people who were inclined to vote for me, but got scared off, Clinton said back at a Women for Women International event in May. Clinton was quick to also throw the Obama administration under the bus, saying Obama cost her the entire presidency. They were connected to, as we now know, the 1,000 Russian agents who were involved in delivering those messages some people were sucked in, Clinton turned against the Democratic National Committee as well, stating they were also partially to blame for her rigid loss. I inherit nothing from the Democratic Party, Clinton said, describing the days immediately after she won her party's nomination.